I thought of the best critique for you. What? You're supposed to write a grim fairy tale, not the whole grim fairy tales book, honey. <laughs> <laughs> it's just read me. Funny. That's cute. <laughs> I thought it was lyrical. <laughs> it did, and it Bish, it wasn't. It was. Blah. It was like Bohemian Rhapsody, except not good, but just as long. <laughs> <laughs> Lyrics. Hi, everyone, and welcome to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How are you doing today, Coco? I'm doing great. Great? You're coming off of two weeks of enjoying your last win. Yeah, that was super exciting. So, yeah. because there was no episode last week, obviously there's no Gem of a Secret Podcast mm-hmm. either. We, I got to live in a win for two weeks. The same win, obviously, but yeah. it was a win nonetheless. Yeah. And no other camper got to do that, and it was fantastic. Fantastic. That's lovely. Yeah. That's lovely. Mm-hmm. So, um, we had to say goodbye to Barbara Wire. Last Barbara week. Wire. The Barbara the Wire. The Barbara Wire. By the way, I don't know why we call her that. It just started on the first day we met her. Oh, okay. Like, I think because she made a joke about LA and being a big deal, like, uh-huh. and, and not in a, like, a serious way. Yeah. And we're like, oh, you're the Barbara Wire? Yeah. So that's where it came from, lovely. I think. Lovely. I mean, she's from LA, so she's Yeah, got she's that. fantastic. Oh, and I, if you don't know, check out her Instagram. We'll post a link in the comments, uh-huh. but she has been serving the love. Yeah, you speak very highly of her. You say that you love like her looks and her performances and all that stuff. Yeah, and she's just super talented. Yeah, she was she was awesome and she was fun to watch. Um, so we had the camp cheer for your daily activity on this episode. So yeah. what were the it looks like Kitty played a big part in getting it all put together. Um, she just kind of sat down and vomited, <laughs> like regurgitated an entire yeah, song. She did. And and the thing that kills me is so the timing for this, and it's not actually ruining anything. It just makes it to where, so behind the scenes, mm-hmm. we actually didn't have a lot of time to do all of that. We really didn't. Like, oh, I think the yeah. time that they actually gave us is the time we actually had. And so Kitty had that written down because we all, we knew there would be a Camp Spirit Challenge, right? Because there was one in the first season. Yeah. So all of us yep. had an idea that that existed. Um, I had written down something for myself mm-hmm. um, as well because, like, you're just trying to think about what the challenges are going to be. Yeah. And so after, like, no, it's going to be a team cheer. We're like, oh. Mm-hmm. And so Kitty was like, well, I have something written down. So that whole scene when we're sitting at the table, that's – they cut out a little, obviously, but not much. Okay. Like, we sat down at that table – and we're like, all right, let's get to it. And it just, she's like, Kitty's like, this is what I brought. And hers was all like super friendly yeah. for a group of people. So we're like, let's do so it. So it just worked out. It yeah. just did it. And That's then awesome. the real behind the scenes tea about that episode is Diana actually choreographed a lot of the routine, mm-hmm. actually. She, her and I were talking about it later that night. Uh, she, because she was in cheerleading and whatever, or whatever. Like, she was a dancer, and so she was making sure everybody was, like, put together, and, like, it yep. was just, like, so a lot of the ideas were hers. Of course, we all broke off She choreographed, twos. and then you kept the tempo of, of the group while you Yeah, were I did. I Well, and this is the one episode I was <laughs> incredibly brain dead. Oh, yeah. So, because now we've been here four days, four or five days at this point, uh-huh. and my brain was done. Yeah. It just was. I was... I was so out of it. I couldn't think of anything funny to say. So I just reacted to Diana a lot. And the thing is, mm-hmm. Diana's really funny, and they cut out a lot of her jokes. Yeah. Not intentionally. I get it. It's editing. But the she she just had me cracking up. So yeah. I was just laughing the whole time. You can really only fit so much into, like, a 40-minute episode. So, yeah. Yeah. So the nightly talent show this night was the Camp Spirit. And this, like you said, last season we got to see the Camp Spirit Challenge where each camper told their own stories. And right. they brought a look that was kind of horror-themed. Um, right. to go along with it. So what was your thought process in deciding your look for so, this challenge? So, I'm not like Tora Hyman. I did not bring a notebook full of everything I was going to do. <laughs> I I was writing, remember I said uh, in one of the second episodes of this that they gave us notebooks to write down our things and so I wrote my ghost story down. And I was actually one of the last people to deliver my voiceover. Um. Uh, I don't know what I was doing. I just remember being at the place we were recording them late. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because obviously we recorded the voiceovers before we actually did the talent show. Yeah. Um, and so, I so my, so my ghost story is actually it's a metaphor which Diana told me later was stupid, which <laughs> I agree with her now. <laughs> which I'll take. It was a about. little wordy. It was a little wordy. Not as wordy as Torres. Torres <laughs> is really wordy, and hers was based off of a family member. So I hate saying anything negative yeah. about it. But everybody at our viewing party on Monday, I'll just say their reactions, and they weren't super thrilled with Torres. They just wanted to know why it was going on so long. <laughs> like, and 
Diana's was funny. It was witty. Mm -hmm. One-liners all over the place. So back to mine. Mine is a metaphor about coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. Some people come out of the closet early in life. Some people come out of the closet later in life. Yeah. And you wear these different hats. That's what it's about. It's about, a, it's about different hats. But some people, and I've met these people in my life, they don't ever actually come out of the closet. Yeah. Um, because they never, like, get the courage to do as such. Coming from where we're from, we've met a lot of people like that. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I, um, I have plenty of stories of people in Grand Junction, Colorado coming out at the age of like I've 50. more than met a couple of people like that if you know yeah. what I'm saying <laughs> she's a beep no, no I just <laughs> like the men that you know can give me no strings mm -hmm. and I just it's one time and done you know right <laughs> <laughs> right until their wives find out party mm -hmm. party high swinger community <laughs> Donatella's is available <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm not that type of girl <laughs> This Dang is what it. I'm supposed to say anymore. Um, so, <laughs> anymore, yes. So that's what it was about. Yeah. And I love how Ruthie said to me, I listened to it several times and I never got what never you Never understood about. what you were talking about. And uh, like, and the funny thing is like, because I'm a writer and that's the problem. <laughs> like I was like, I can't be witty and lyrical at the same time. Like yeah. it just didn't work. I had like a yeah. couple of jokes in there. Like I had my Game of Thrones joke. Uh huh. And then I had a joke about muscle bears and some other things, but. Uh, yeah, so this is the one challenge that Diana didn't help me with. You missed the mark. I missed the mark. <laughs> but my outfit was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. It was one of the... So, small tea about that outfit. That dress I'm wearing actually belongs to the absolutely problematic Mimi I'm first. <laughs> it does. I, it does. I bought it from her, like, several years ago. Yeah. Um, it's like a mimic of a dress that she wore in Drag Race. Yeah. So... Yep. Nope. So that's what I wore, and then I bought all this stuff to go with it, and I did my makeup, and, you know, they didn't love it. Yeah. So I was standing first, and got red for filth, and wanted to cry, but it's fine, because there were, you know, several other people to go after me, so I could wallow in those comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you just got to be in your head the entire time. Yeah, and just, so. like, incredibly praying that some of the closest friends, because at this point, you know, I've made friends with these people. Yes. Like, hoping that some of my closest friends now are going to go home or get worse critiques than I do. So every time they said a person's name, I'm like, yeah, that outfit probably is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they hate it. <laughs> well, and the other thing is, I didn't actually hear everybody's story because yeah. I was late. Not really late, but I was last to actually deliver mm -hmm. my over. So I just saw costumes. I didn't know what the stories were. Yeah. I, I, know. I think personally, also, you talked about how you really liked Diana's um, mm -hmm. this week. I think Diana's was probably my favorite. Um, it was a really cool concept, and I liked the look that went along with it. Yeah. Um, Kitty's was funny. I um, liked the story a lot, and of course her accent is just a bit infectious, so it makes whatever she's saying just hilarious. Yeah. Um, and uh, I really liked her concept for, for all of it. Mm -hmm. I thought the makeup, there was like some areas where it could have been a little bit more like mm -hmm. polished, but you know, it was... It was a good story. So I think of Kitty as Valentina and me as Aja. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Yeah, because every time, every time Kitty spoke, the judges were just they in ate her up. Ditches. She is. She but, is so. She has such like charisma that it's very easy just to like really like her. And like that's that's the thing is like watching her these weeks. I've been so impressed by her just because like she really has like that wit right off the top of her head. And right. they're sometimes they're corny jokes and sometimes they're just like hilarious know, just... like zingers that she has so i also really did like claire's story too i, I like the whole like messed up wig thing like that i loved that story it's such a relatable story as a, a queen you know we all have those wigs that are just beyond repair sometimes yeah it's actually funny because i have a wig at the bottom of the bag it's actually this red one i'm wearing right now <laughs> it is it is like this is i've had you control... treated it enough oh, oh good heavens like i i restore it a lot but not yeah. restore it to where it looks good what I do like this is always like my Halloween wig and my dance wig oh okay like cause from a distance it actually looks like okay but like up, up close, close it's like, disgusting oh this is a nest yeah this is a <laughs> nest of rats like it's ridiculous And I, but I love this hair because it goes with Halloween themes mm -hmm. like everybody needs like a messy wig this is the wig from the bottom of the bag nice like honestly nice. so uh, Kitty and Diana were in the top two this yes. week and we do talk about who wins, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. Yes. Yeah. So Kitty won this week, and you know what? She's been doing good. She's also been one of the ones that was pretty consistently safe up until yeah. this point. So you know what? You did the same thing last episode, and then she did it this episode. So we have a win for you, Kitty, and um, most a lot of the a lot of the cast right now, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, most of the cast has uh -huh. a win at this point, and 
it's funny because I said last episode how me and Kitty were always writing safe in the middle. So when I got my win, like, then I was, like, boosted above her. Her and I were just riding safe the whole time. And one of the Reddit comments from today's episode, uh, or, sorry, Wednesday's episode, said about Diana, it just said, wow, Diana just really can't get a win, can she? <laughs> Because she's, like, been in the top most of the time, but she can't get a win. This, I feel like, is a good segue to bring in our special guest. Yeah, I think so. so. Let's do that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome none other than Autumn Rain's Heart, Diana's drag daughter. Ding! This is Autumn Rain's Heart. Hi, how are you? Diana Fire's drag daughter. Unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how long have you known Diana for? I don't remember. She just popped into my life one time, and just like herpes, I can't get rid of her. <laughs> Lovely. Jeez. So what do you think of Diana's look? Um, She was the one with the, the foot and the head, right? Yeah, the heel. Yeah. Yes. yes. I thought that she was like a leg up on the competition. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad she didn't win because she needed the ego check. <laughs> <laughs> so Diana, from what I Such hear... Made I just seriously, <laughs> made all of her outfits on the show. It shows. Yes. Um, it does. Oh goodness! No, it was really good. Her but, outfit was very nice. Well, isn't it one of the outfits? Like, I mean, we can. So you had a drag show here in Portland, Oregon, called Not Another Drag Show. Absolutely. And I've seen that poster a thousand times, and I'm pretty sure the outfit on the poster. It is. is it has the stripes and everything. Yeah. You got her bamboozled. That is the exact outfit. It is. <laughs> <laughs> she told me when we were filming or when we were taking that picture that I lost my train of thought there was whoop <laughs> <laughs> you know whoop <laughs> that happens often does it oh, oh boy <laughs> oh honey but no when we were taking that picture uh, she was like you're gonna see this again very soon just make sure you watch YouTube mm. oh okay oh, so she broke NDA cute um <laughs> <laughs> so did you help Diana with any of her outfits for the show no no, really? she lounged around while Diane and I had brainstorm sessions together. Aww. Yeah, I was drunk. <laughs> I was no help. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so, um, who are your drag siblings? Who are Diana Fire's drag siblings? Uh, okay, Kiss. Her, her daughters. I have my sister, Kisses Ash. And if there's any other ones, I haven't hit them with hangers enough yet. Oh. No. Party. Okay. I All love right. abortion. The mommy <laughs> You knew what you were getting yourself into asking me to be somewhere. I, know, I, I wasn't sure if it was an abortion joke or a mommy dearest joke, so I'm Both. not sure. Oh Bring me the axe. With you, I never know. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what it's like to do drag in the Portland scene as someone who is a local to yeah. the area. Um, do you ever like being really poor and then people being like, wow, you should do better, but then they don't pay you to get better? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Portland. <laughs> I can tell you that it is a complete 180 from where we were at. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is cool that there is a lot more to go and do throughout the months as far as drag events go. Because, like, for Coco and I, it was like we had karaoke that we would each host twice a month. Yeah. And then we also had a monthly show. So mm -hmm. we were doing a total... We were going from doing a total of five gigs a month now to doing, like, many gigs a month. Then. How many were on your calendar, girl? Um, I think that this month, I think I have 22 gigs. Damn. Yeah. So yes. from five gigs to 22 a month. Yes. Yeah. Okay. With one karaoke. Actually, we're doing karaoke again at Valentine's. Yeah, we are. September 30th. Are you also <laughs> going to be at the local lounge again? Yes. On the first Sunday of every month, me and Donatella have a karaoke show. Oh, that's so exciting. Mm -hmm. So tell me about your drag inspiration. And would you ever want to be on Camp Wanakiki? I would love to be on Camp Wanakiki. My drag inspiration is a lot of like old school Broadway meets strippers um they didn't like each other and so that explains my face <laughs> but i'd love to be on tv mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah same in any capacity oh. yeah no like cops or yeah. porters <laughs> yeah. or camp on kiki <laughs> so this week i was in the bottom for the first time ever and uh, the other person in the bottom was boris to death Yes. Now, we won't tell you until next episode who goes home, but obviously you guys should watch the episode. It was a heartbreaking bottom, too. Oh, gosh. It really was. I think it's getting harder and harder every week now that people are starting to really like these competitors that, you know, like, have been in it since the beginning, and people right. are falling in love with you guys. Yeah, well, and the reason Boris was in the bottom is he did a, he had, a, like, a jock bro kind of person that was, like... Like uh, an incel. It kind of seemed like, like an, an incel. incel. Yeah, yeah, actually... Yeah. Gosh, mm -hmm. if you would have said the word incel, I think that would have actually... It seemed like it, 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 it was just too real. 
Yeah. It was too real. You don't know what that means, do no, you? No, we don't. I went to public school. <laughs> <laughs> Incel. Involuntarily celibate. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Somebody who f- goes on those incel, you know, Facebook groups and they're just like, Women well, suck. Women and they're suck. all dykes. They'll and never sleep all, with us. Yeah. yeah. Bah, 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 bah. I'm going to kill oh. everyone because a girl won't sleep with me. Mm-hmm. And so the other critique that Boris got, Boris did not have any death in his. Like, there wasn't a ghost story. There wasn't. Um, yeah. Some people, some of the critiques I heard is like when he got into the car kind of situation, because I did see his little uh, thing that they said, uh, you know, what if he crashed the car and he's a yeah. ghost and now he's an incel? Yeah. Like that actually would have been kind of funny and would have worked. Actually, let's ask Adam, what would you have done to jazz it up to make it more scary? Someone should have died. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> nobody has to die. Like you've seen The Conjuring, nobody dies except for the dog, but like kill the dog. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Bring it that extra mile. Make someone cry. That's funny. <laughs> work <laughs> uh so i think that's all the questions i have okay. yeah i'm gonna go find more liquor uh, autumn do you have anything that you want to plug oh, yeah. um any shows my phone might be dying i need to plug that in <laughs> party bye or for autumn rain's heart everybody in the youtube comments <laughs> don't clap don't clap we won't post our social media below. Go find her. All right, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. Once again, my name is Donatella My Secrets. I am Coco Gem Holiday at Coco Gem Holiday on Instagram. Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. Uh, thank you for tuning in once again this week. We would love to see you again next week. So tune in to A Gem of a Secret Podcast. Like, subscribe, drop a comment down below, and make sure you're watching Camp Juan Kiki this season. Later. Three. Why do you always do that? I'm gonna fight you. Okay, <laughs> let's do like. like. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, okay. that's, that's good. But yeah. One time a guy wanted to pay me to lock me in a car on a really hot day. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. And Donatella under Mars. <laughs> Under more? Under more. I am drunk. Okay. <laughs>